Assassin's Creed 3 is the best Assassin's Creed game ever, or at least it is to me. In this video, I want to break down why AC3 is one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games. Now, I know everyone has their preference on AC games, and this, and this video is not to convince you on why it is the best. It's more about why I love it so much, and I'm sure there are quite a few out there that feel the same way. At the end of the day, I still enjoy and love all the Assassin's Creed games in their own way. I've been playing Assassin's Creed games since the very first one came out and I instantly fell in love with the series. When I grew up, wasn't able to play many M-rated games, but AC1 was one of the first ones I was able to convince my parents to allow me to get it. I instantly fell in love with the character of Desmond, Altair, the Assassin's Creed, the Templars, and honestly everything. Visually, it looked amazing and even plays great to this day. At that point, I was invested in the series. Every time a new Assassin's Creed game came out, I remember doing nothing that weekend but playing it until I complete the main story, and back then you could actually do it within two to three days. Flash forward to the announcement of Assassin's Creed 3 and I remember being so freaking excited. An Assassin's Creed game set in the American Revolution. What an amazing time period for Ubisoft to choose and I honestly think they did a great job at representing it. The city's fed alive, the forests are lush and green, and the frontier is vast and unforgiving. You could travel to Boston where you'll meet Connor's mentor Achilles, Davenport. You also encounter a number of historical figures, including Paul Revere, Benjamin Franklin, and George Washington. In New York, you can even explore the city's bustling streets and docks and witness the chaos of the American Revolution. Then you have Philadelphia. Now, this location is special to me as living right outside of the city. I mean, you can literally visit Independence Hall where the Declaration of Independence was signed. And although Connor was a completely fictional character, it was really cool to see during all those gameplay moments when you're just standing in the background watching them actually sign it. Speaking of Connor, I honestly really enjoyed him as a character. He is very dry or blunt, but the moments when he does show emotion, you can feel it. There's one specific scene where he yells at his father, Hatham Kenway and George Washington, and I always remember it. He literally tells them if either one of them follows him or opposes him he will kill them it's a very powerful moment in my eyes and honestly I, I still every time i think of assassin's creed i think of that moment when i think of connor on top of that connor is just an, an awesome assassin he's a skilled warrior and a natural leader he's a force to be reckoned with in battle he is strong he's agile proficient in a variety of weapons and with him being a natural leader he's able to just rally any type of allies and inspire them to fight for what they believe in connor's combat is also a ton of fun he uses a variety of weapons. His primary is the tomahawk, which he can use to deal powerful melee attack. He also has a hidden blade, which is iconic for any other assassin out there. He can assassinate enemies from behind. He can use a bow and an arrow to attack enemies from dis from a distance. He can also use rope darts to grapple onto enemies or objects. And then, of course, you got the fist fighting combat, which feels great in itself too. Regardless of your choices of weapons, it just always felt amazing, and I, I truly love the combat for Assassin's Creed 3. Another form of combat that we even got in the game, which you might have forgotten, is actually the naval ship combat. Technically, it started in Assassin's Creed 3, the combat that everyone absolutely loves for Black Flag, or for the most part, most people do. In Assassin's Creed 3, Connor can use his ship, the Morgan, to travel between different cities and settlements in the game. He can also use it to attack enemy ships and defend his allies. It wasn't as smooth as Assassin's Creed 4 combat, but it still was a great beginning to it, and it honestly still holds up today. Now, of course, we do have to talk about the events outside of the Animus if we're talking about Assassin's Creed 3. Personally, I love the modern day story in Assassin's Creed, and I even enjoyed Assassin's Creed 3's modern story because it was a lot more personal than the other stories in previous games. In Assassin's Creed 3, we get to see Desmond Miles as a real person with real emotions, and we see him struggle with the weight of the responsibility he's given, while also seeing him grow as a character as he learns more about the world that's around him and his role in all of this. The other cool thing about the modern day stuff is you get to actually use the hidden blade against modern day Templar security. You see Desmond full out just using the hidden blade on enemies, just nonstop taking them down. Like in this 
game you honestly see him become like the true killer that desmond is not just inside the animus other cool thing you do outside the animus is you get you even get to do some skyscraper scaling which reminds me of the countless times i played splinter cell double agent and scaling those skyscrapers too it's such a good time obviously the biggest letdown of it all was the conclusion of the story for desmond which by now you already know if you're watching this video but just in case here is your ac3 spoiler warning okay here we go so obviously desmond being killed off is probably my least favorite thing in the game i wish we could have seen him in more games i wish that we could have seen him develop even learning about edward kenway i don't know i i still think it was a little bit too early but at this point in the series i've accepted and i see reasons on why they did it a lot of people say they don't like the modern day stuff and that's fine i'm one of the people who fiends for new ancient lore ancient one lore it is very complex and i get that it can tend to be a little bit of a kingdom hearts style lore for complexity but i still find it very interesting especially with the worlds that they've built at the same time killing off desmond opened up a lot of possibilities for new modern day settings i'm really satisfied on where it's going for the latest games too i am very excited from mirage and those of you who did play the modern day setting for valhalla will know exactly why now here is a slight spoiler for valhalla for the modern day aspect as well just in case now all i'm going to say is that i don't know from what they set up it seems like we may finally see desmond again in the future of modern day settings i don't know maybe it was just a little easter egg there's a clip out there you can probably find if you literally just look up desmond assassin's creed valhalla you'll see why we may not I don't know. Either way, I'm extremely excited to see where the series continues to go. But anyways, back to Assassin's Creed 3. Honestly, I love the game. Like I said, the characters, the story, the setting, it's a perfect combo in my eyes, and I still love all the other Assassin's Creed games too. Ezio's storyline is still amazing. Arno is still a ton of fun and graphically looks so good, especially for the year. The Fry twins are complete badasses, and I loved replaying that in Syndicate over the last year. Every game, honestly, honestly has their own strength and weakness and Assassin's Creed 3 just stands above them all for me. Now, if you enjoyed this video, press X to assassinate that like button. I'm sorry, I had to. On what your thoughts are of the Assassin's Creed games, whether it's 3, the modern setting, or how you're feeling about the current ones, and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.